Hi, I wanted to show you a few tricks and tips for editing your photos in Lightroom and Photoshop. Primarily, I think Lightroom is the software you're going to use, but you might want to use a little bit of Photoshop just to touch things up. And I will show you some examples of where you might want to do that. First of all, you can use the Adobe software on campus in one of the computer labs, especially the Mac lab. And of course, you can look at the WCTC website for information if you need that. Also, you can download the software. You can download it for 30 days for free as a trial and as a full version or you can license it yourself and you can see here I've got the student rates if you want the photography bundle it's ten dollars a month for Lightroom and Photoshop if you have interest in other things especially video then you might be more interested in the all apps for twenty dollars a month this is actually the plan I use and you know really you, you'll find ways to use these other packages if you can afford it then um, it's, a, it's a good way to go um, anyways, you can get that from Adobe website if you need that. So I'm going to start off here. I'm going to use uh, Photoshop and Lightroom. They're both the Creative Cloud versions. This is the subscription I just showed you. And when you first open up a new Lightroom catalog, uh, this is what you get. There's nothing there. So we're going to first import. You can either do that here with this button, or you can do File and Import Photos and Video. We'll just go ahead and click the obvious one. It opens up a secondary window, and what I'm going to do here is I put some pinhole photos on my desktop, so I just need to navigate to where that is. Okay, so you can see I've navigated to my pinhole folder, and I've got a few examples in here, including a couple of camera examples, and obviously those aren't, weren't taken as a pinhole lens, but I want to show you some things. Also, I want you to take a look at um, a, a few different examples. First of all, if you're if you just plug in your card, you can get it from the card. I recommend copying things over first and then going to the folder on your desktop. If you do it as a card, you always want to copy as DNG, which is a negative, or um, as just copy it's copy the file over exactly as it is. Moving it is okay, really. I don't think that that's the, the best option because you want to make sure you have a good copy of it on your, your working device before you remove it from your flash drive. And add is just going to add it in from the flash drive and that's going to be a, a big problem because eventually you're going to write over those on your on your computer, uh, excuse me, on your camera or you know turn it back in. Next thing I wanted to show you is the develop settings. Now right now it's set up for none. I'd like you to consider some of these as um, presets and it'll give you some examples of different ways you might edit it. Things that you can play with either here or once you've imported them. The other thing is the metadata and this is kind of important. Anytime that you, you make a photograph you own the copyright to that and so you want to make sure that your contact information is part of that. I already set up a copyright metadata for me but if you don't have one you can just do new and you can type in some examples. Next is keywords and this is a great way to find your work after you've edited or imported them. To give you an example my main catalog has somewhere in the 200,000 photo range which of course would be a total nightmare to find anything if it didn't have keywords and um, they can be as obvious as you know pinhole for this um, now because I've got different examples I probably want to wouldn't want to be any more specific than that now but once we import them then we can add additional and then of course just hit the import now because I've already copied these over to my hard drive I'm just going to import them without copying them you can see they come in pretty quick uh, there's a little preview button over here so this is building standard previews this is just going to speed things up a little bit after it's done building them to give you an example of what I use to, to make pinholes. You can see I made my own pinhole body cap and of course you saw that from the video. The one thing I didn't show in the video is, is I made a telephoto version just for you know giggles and in addition to the body cap which we see here I just made a, a large um, I think it was a one and a half inch hole in the body cap taped a Dixie cup to it and then I made the, the little hole at the end of the Dixie cup and basically that's just the same way that that you saw it in the, the video except that I moved the pinhole further from the sensor in the camera so now that we're in here we might add some additional photos this was McNary Dam so we might might add that Columbia River anyways you, you kinda get the idea here the more keywords you add the more useful it's gonna be to find your images later on 
Here I've got a couple of self-portraits. Oh, this one is also happened to be an infrared camera, so it wasn't made with a normal color process. A couple of self-portraits, so I might add that to there. I mean, you can see if I if I select more than one, that's just the standard operating way to select more than one. Shift click, command click, or control click. So I might put my name in here, self-portrait. I actually took these in the studio. You can kind of get the idea that we've got a studio backdrop here. Anyways, you get the idea. This one was w made with that macro lens, and I have one here with the, with a dog, just to give you a variety of, of images to choose from. Now, what you can see here is that, first of all, we've got we can see the catalog here. If you want to see the exact folder that it's in, you can click on this next one. Collections, we haven't set any up, but that you can sort things by collections. So we can have a collection for, say, pinhole, and then all your pinhole folders will be there. Publish services, you can see we can actually use Lightroom to bring things directly from here to places that you might want to use them, like Facebook or Flickr or whatever. Um, mostly we don't care about that for the sake of this course. I'm just going to go ahead and minimize this side, give us a little bit more room. Down here we can see other metadata. Um, you can see the file size. You can see things like when it was shot. You can see here the metadata that we added here. This is all the contact information that I added on the import. And you can even see what camera I used to, to create this image. Up on top here, we have a histogram. This shows you all of the exposure data. And basically, everything that we have on the right here shows the highlights. Everything here on the left shows the shadows. And because it's not filling up the entire window here, that shows that it's relatively underexposed. So that's something that we're going to want to address. So uh, catalog is where you are going to want to sort through things, keywords, and all that. Develop module is where you are going to do your editing. So once we're here, uh, because this is underexposed, the first thing we're going to want to do is, is go to the basic tab here and just move this exposure value over until that histogram fills the window pretty well. Now what we can see here, you know, where we had started off, this was all really pretty dark shadow. Now we can see eyes. Uh, we see lots of little squiggly things. And every time that you open up your camera sensor, you're going to add a little bit of dust. Um, when you have a very, very small aperture, as you do with a pinhole, it's going to show that in a very pronounced way. If I had shot with a regular lens, you wouldn't notice these in the same way. And I'll show you, there's a couple ways that we can, we can address that. First is here in Lightroom, and if we click on the spot removal, we can change the size of this brush so it's just bigger than what we want to do, and click and as easy as that. The heal tool tends to work better for this kind of thing. So by default, it might be on clone. Clone is going to be an exact copy of pixels, so it doesn't tend to blend very well. So just to give you an example of what that looks like, you can see we've got a big schmear if we go that way. If we do it as a heal, it might not be perfect, but it, you're going you're gonna to see it blend better, just to give you an idea. So by and large, heal tends to work better. And we can just click and drag on these things. And we can clean those up pretty quick. I'm going to leave a couple of them so that I can show you what that looks like in Photoshop. Next, I want to show you a couple of ways to make your images appear more sharp. Now, I'm just going to go ahead and close this here. Back to the basic tab. The, the key for making things appear more sharp than they, they actually are, it comes down really to contrast. And so we can do it in a number of ways. First of all, there's a contrast slider. And so we can just increase the contrast, and you can see how that adds a little bit more definition. We can do it manually. I'm going to reset that to zero by moving the white point and the shadow black point. And so we can slide this over. Maybe we can bring this down a little bit and effectively have the exact same re result as we would get with the contrast, only with a little bit more control because for example, you might need to edit the white point more than you would the black point. And so if you do contrast, it kind of does everything evenly here. You can, you can adjust things very specifically as needed. Next, I want to point out the clarity slider. This is going to be a midpoint contrast, which you don't really need to understand. Just understand that it's going to give things, as you might guess from the name, a little bit more clarity. I used to say it kind of dehazes things, but now there's a new tool that's called dehaze, so I, I can't actually um, make that claim anymore. 
but just look at how how crazy that that starts to bring detail back just by moving the slider you know 17 points out of a 100 point scale makes a huge difference uh, saturation and vibrance are down here together saturation is going to make all your colors more saturated and what happens is they can pretty quickly get out of hand or desaturate if you go to the left reset that to zero vibrance is also a saturation tool but it's a smart saturation tool what it's going to do is it's going to look at the overall values and it's going to say okay here we've got a relatively saturated value we don't need to bump that up quite as much as here which is relatively desaturated and it, it is, is pretty clever you don't need to know the math of that but even all the way up it doesn't look as wrong let's say as um, the, the saturation slider does all the way up usually I like to keep these values clarity and vibrance no more than say mid 20s maybe 50 on a, a particular image no, not usually any higher than that if you bump down here to the effects this is where they've added the dehaze filter and this is again another you know midpoint kind of contrast tool and again you don't want to go too far but again we add a lot of, of specifically located contrast it looks for example it looks at the difference between pixel to pixel and so it, it kinda obviously it was made to kinda decrease the mist that you might get in a hazy morning like even if it's just kind of a, a general sort of hazy day this is going to be a, a really nice tool it does darken things a little bit so if you add some dehaze then you need to come back up and almost always move the shadow slider over and kind of counteract that and so just to give you an idea of where we started I'm going to come back here to the import and you can see quickly how fast you can make an image look much much better and honestly if you have something in this area of, of sharpness I'm gonna call this pretty successful we don't expect super focused super detailed images in pinhole if we wanted that we wouldn't be using a pinhole lens we'd be using glass optics so um, from here I'm just gonna go ahead and show you a couple of quick edits here without narrating to see so you can see how fast it, it actually is Crop tool. Um, I think you know. I can imagine this is a you know a sort of a square. Obviously, I was standing pretty still in the middle, moving my arms to get this effect with a relatively long exposure, 15 seconds. Also notice that there can often be a little bit of a color shift when you use the DAs. Just be aware of that if you need to. Then adjust the, the vibrance or the saturation. You can usually address it that way. And of course, you know, I started to get silly with this. Now, one of the things that I want to do is I want to brighten this one up a little bit, of course, everywhere. But I also want to brighten just this side. There's a, a tool here called the Graduated Filter. If you click on that, we have a whole bunch of pull downs. If I go to Exposure, I want to bring this side up a little bit. Maybe, maybe somewhere in there to balance out the exposure. And maybe we can tweak this after the fact. Um, maybe even add a little bit of clarity to that side. And then done down here in the bottom.
Okay, so once we have that done, you might want to edit things in Photoshop. Uh, again, I'm going to go back to this dog photo here to, to show you um, how that might look. One of the easiest ways to do that is just right click and then do edit in. If you edit in Photoshop, it's going to edit it in as a background layer. If you do open as a smart object, it's going to allow you to go back and tweak the develop module settings if you want. That may or may not be useful. This is the default. You can also do Control or Command E on your keyboard. Once we're here, I would like to impress upon you the um, wisdom of never editing your background layer. If you add in a new layer above that, then you can make these edits. And we'll just use the spot healing brush. You can make these edits and then you can adjust them if you need it. If you do it right on the background layer and you realize five or six steps down, then you're kind of stuck with it. You can re move all of your edits or you can, um, if it was on a separate layer, then you can go ahead and just erase the, the parts that you want. So the spot healing tool works very similarly to uh, what you saw in the, um, the Lightroom develop module. However, I think it has a little bit more sophistication and um, you can see one of my edits here didn't actually work very good so we're gonna we're gonna fix that there too so you can see it just works uh, maybe a touch better the other thing we might want to do here is increase the contrast even a little further one of the great tools for that would be curves and of course you can edit these as much as you want an s curve is kind of the traditional sort of way to do it and you want to find the right balance the other thing that is actually this is an undo crazy clever is just the auto button. Click on it once and you can see what it does. Okay, it's not that much. If you alter option click, depending on your PC or Mac, then you get this secondary window. You can have snap neutral tones, so if something has a little bit of a color cast, you can get rid of it. And you can try these different options. And so for this one, we don't really see huge differences. We see the biggest between there and there, maybe. Um, but you know, I recommend you, you try that as a starting point. It's super easy. You can also get the same sort of options in levels. And again, um, Alt or Command click. And you get the exact same window here. Uh, I don't want to go into this the rest of this just because it's a little bit more complicated and beyond the, the scope of the tutorial. But anyways, you can you can see how without very much work you can you can get a pretty decent result. And going from there to you know where we started here you can see huge difference much more satisfying just to get a little bit more editing in don't think of editing as fixing certainly you can fix some some problems that, that might have been introduced like you know this particular one was underexposed but think of it more as enhancing enhancing after the fact has been a part of photography really from the beginning we talk about Photoshop today as if it's a bad thing, and certainly it can go way too far. But basically what Lightroom does, what Photoshop does, is it allows a photographer to do the kinds of edits that people were doing in the darkroom all along. Think of it that way. Think of it more as enhancing. Think of it more as putting the final polish on your work. And I think that, that if you take that approach, everything will be pretty good. There, obviously, there's a ton more that you can learn about Lightroom and Photoshop. This is going to be enough to get you started on your project. Do a little bit of experimenting for sure. Some of these other options here are, are definitely a lot of fun. Give it a try and see what you like. Let me know if you have any questions.